So, because a lot of people know that over the last, well, when my son was kidnapped, I went under a lot of stress. And when my beloved dog died, I also went under some stress. So um, I thought some, I was, I've been catching a lot of fake non-profits and exposing fake charities and non-profits lately. So um, with a double thought in mind, I thought, let's see if those Samaritans really do help for free or not and answer you and listen to your problems or if they're just a fake non-profit because we've got a lot on my head and a lot of stress. and I wouldn't mind somebody to talk to, apart from the one person I live with, because I don't really see many people. And so I was seeking, actually, about Samaritans, trying to find some other information, and I came across this from the metro.co.uk. Most people know I'm a blogger, so this is a blog post being read by a blogger. What happened when I called Samaritans for my mental health? The person who wrote this, yeah, has written it on Metro, yeah, and has used a picture here with a picture of a brain by Hattie Gladwell. And Hattie Gladwell wrote, for the first time ever, two nights ago, I called Samaritans. I was having a bad time mentally and I wasn't sure, blah, blah, blah. I've lived with mental illness, blah, 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 blah. Here's an ad. Here's another picture of the same kind with the same kind of artwork. So this is not somebody who's just been to Samaritans and coming on some website like Facebook or Quora or something to say, yeah, I called Samaritans, and even if it is Quora or Facebook, most of the answers on Quora, uh, a lot of them, if they're to do with something that can be promoted, you will actually have employees of that company there posting as if they're innocent people, not connected. And so then I read about Samaritans. You look at the picture. This is a professional blogger, Ella Byworth from metro.co.uk. So Metro has pictures ready for you as a blogger. I haven't even looked at Metro yet, nor have I looked at Hattie Gladwell, which is a fake name. I'm a blogger and this is a paid blog post. So never mind about Samaritans. This is a paid blog post. I Googled the Samaritans phone number. I also found them there to offer them. They're really good and blah, blah, but I can't ex She's, and this person says, the specifics of our conversation will need to stay between me and them. So I'm not going to tell you what mental problem they had. But this is completely spell checked, put into, this is professional blogging. And so a professional blogger is writing about what happened when they called Samaritans for Health. Or somebody who is mentally ill or mentally in distress. Mentally ill is a bad word because being distressed is mental stress. Uh, is writing this better spell check than me and I'm an author and a blogger and sometimes I can't be bothered to spell check as perfectly as this. This, only a paid blog is spell checked as perfectly as this. And so it's basically a standard blog post, Ella Byworth again for metro.co. So all the pictures here have been made for this or used for this blog post, all by Ella Byworth for Metro.co. So this person has used, Metro on Metro.co, has used, I'd recommend calling Samaritans. You do not have to feel suicidal. And here it is. Need support, contact the Samaritans. For emotional support, blah, blah. Visit a Samaritans branch in person or go to the Samaritans website. So, uh... What I wanted to do here was show you I'd already gone. Donate. 10 pounds a month could fund two calls for help every month. All right? Five pounds a call. That's where they're happy to answer you. Online shop as well. Visit our online shop today, Shop with Samaritans. 
Samaritan's Shop of Home of Wellbeing gifts. Stay safe with our face masks. Gifts for kids. Oh my God. 40 quid. 10 pounds for a t-shirt. Well, here it costs about... Um, for a t-shirt like that, it costs about $2 to get one printed in a factory. If you buy enough of them. Uh, so, it's just a white t-shirt for God's sake. This is terrible. Let customers speak for us. Well, you can make your own reviews. That's very easy. Laura Berry. Who's Laura Berry? Julia. <laughs> Julia. Well, anyway, they've got a shop selling things and it costs £10 for... And you can run a Samarathon and get people to give you money and then give it to them, yeah? So, I'm sure they help people and I'm very sorry for the people uh, who think they're being helped and it's very happy for the people who feel better after talking to a Samaritan. But what they don't realise is that every time they talk to a Samaritan, that Samaritan uh, charges a donator five pounds. So five pounds of donated money gets taken. So I started writing to Samaritans. And I got stuff like this. You say you refuse to suffer anymore. Moving house. Loss can be a painful emotional and it's understandable that you experience the depth of pain and sadness you did. Is this something that ever goes away? It's difficult to say. It's good to hear you talking about letting and being happy again. You've mentioned lots of things that have brought stress into your life. What does it feel like? So here's the, here's the bit at the end. This is the important bit. There's a standard copy and paste Loss can be a painful emotion that's understandable. That's a copy and paste. Yeah. And they will put some personal things in about letting go and being happy again, moving house. So they will have a read of two paragraphs and then they will just say you've written a lot. Yeah. And do this copy and paste. So we are here to listen during these difficult times and I'll leave you with two questions. This happiness have you found? What does it feel like? How do you think staying in your private enclave will help you develop resilience? That's two questions. So if I write back to her, yeah, what does she get? Or what does Samaritans get? Samaritans gets five pounds because they're not taking calls in the moment. They're taking um, emails only. You can't visit a centre. You can call in your own country. And every time you call a Samaritan, five pounds of donations has been accounted for. The only thing is, it does not take... The reason take... that I wanted to volunteer with Samaritans... <laughs> Help us answer more calls I for support at this crucial time. Well, I tried to call them, was, so and they said we don't work, answer calls in this evening, crucial time. And that was kind we of only it, do emails. Friday, and there wasn't really much... Right. Much more to my life, so okay. I just wanted to do That's something. That's what they said to me, which is why you just saw an email from the Samaritans. And that was about the fourth. I think what's rewarding is just knowing that you've I think the fourth. Else, that thing that you've done something. My third, the fourth response to my third reply. So I've already um, wasted fifteen pounds of donations doing. money in exposing this scam. The only thing is, it's a scam that really does help people. That's the worrying thing about it because some people really are at a loss um, what to do and they call Samaritans very, um, and on the phone sort of proactive well just talking out, and being listened to they feel better down, enough to not kill themselves or something extra help, so I see the person they're talking to the doesn't really ready to talk to. most the of them I suppose nice phone I've never calls. called them because they're not taking calls and I wish I had but done um, many, many I will do at some point just to record it and see how well instructed and how knowledgeable about um, uh, psychology and, so all of those and psychiatry, are huge uh, benefits. If the assistants thinking. are because when it says volunteer to be a Samaritan, let's see, volunteer. What kind of qualifications do you have to have? Oh, no, unable to offer face-to-face -face service, you see. Volunteer. So, 
Require be becoming our keeping volunteers safe. Can I volunteer? We're not able to accommodate volunteering from home. Have to undergo undergo a recruitment and training process. It's not something you can start immediately. So you don't need to be actually have any knowledge about psychiatry or mental welfare. You just have to be trained like some um, boiler room shop about how to respond. I mean, you would even you would definitely let's see about this inquire about becoming a Samaritan's listening volunteer. Oh my God! They answer more than five million calls. That's uh, five times. That's twenty five million pounds in England, uh, Samaritan's UK. Twenty five million pounds in donations. That's how they account for twenty five million pounds of their donations by saying. That that is phone calls at five pounds a call. Why does it take five pounds for a phone call? They're volunteers. They're not paid. What's five pounds about the phone call, man? What is five pounds about the phone call? And you won't let people do it from home. So what you have is a call center with some manager there, with volunteers doing it. Jamelia, Samaritans volunteer. Not true. All Samaritans have their name hidden and all Samaritans are called Joe. And so that's a fake name of a fake volunteer. And this is a picture of stock images of somebody on a phone. It's not a photo of a Samaritan. It's a stock image. Listening volunteers. Every six seconds, they get five pounds. In England, uh, not around the world. They've got a hundred and something branches in the UK. This is a big scam. You'll gain a range of new skills. You'll receive full training to prepare you for the kinds of conversations you'll have. So you don't need any knowledge about mental welfare at all to talk to somebody in distress as a Samaritan. Excuse me, if somebody's going to kill themselves inside a room and they've got their son with them and they won't come out of the room like you see in these SWAT team movies, yeah? What do you get? You get a psych psychologically trained profiler and talker to come and try and talk the person down from the balcony. Yeah, but that has to be somebody who has been specifically and professionally trained to talk with somebody who is in mental distress. Because unless you're specifically trained to talk with somebody in mental distress, which means you've been to university and you've got a degree, yeah, not you're going to receive full training to prepare you for the kinds of conversations you have. When you start out, you'll have a mentor with you to give you confidence you're doing the right thing. Well, that, excuse me, but a psychiatrist, you have to have at least a Bachelor of Arts in Psychiatry or at least a year or two in mental health um, industry. Yeah, and it is an industry. It's more about making money than helping anybody's mental health. And non-profits are a scam. It's always different. What's it like? It's interesting. It feels like a privilege to have people confiding in you. Does it? You're never on your own. So now they're boosting the feeling of the volunteer. And there's a fun, supportive atmosphere in our branches. You can offer support on the phone, email or text. You can take a break between conversations when you need to. Spending a few hours helping other people can make you feel good about yourself. So at five pounds a call, and you're sitting there for hours taking hours, and they, uh, taking calls every six seconds, Jesus, Lexi, I was blown away by how prepared I felt to enter phone lines and how helpful everyone was once I began taking calls. What you're looking for. You're willing to understand someone else's point of view even if it's different. You'll help maintain a friendly and supportive atmosphere. You're comfortable with your own feelings and can share another's. Share another's. Discreet. You be careful with information and never share it outside Samaritans. So obviously there's a secrecy, a corporate secrecy act which you have to sign that you're not allowed to talk about Samaritans outside so that they can keep their scam hidden, which was uh, 
I've forgotten the name of the guy who just got 16 years in prison for doing a, a, a loan shark scam in America. Yeah? Similar kind of thing. But he and his company made such a rule that people weren't allowed their cell phones in the company, in their no recording devices, and they had to sign a secrecy act because they were scamming people. They ap accept applications from a wide range of applicants. So you can have any idiot, idiot. You need to be 18 or over. And because we'll invest in you, our training is really high quality. No, you won't invest in us. And what makes your trailing high quality? Because I've just had a fourth conversation with one of your Samaritans and seen they're not listening, rather trying to just keep asking a question at the end to keep me talking for the five pounds fee that Samaritans can then, it doesn't cost five pounds because it's a free volunteer. You're getting them to do it for free and then you're keeping the five pounds yourself. And the five pounds is not, no call in the world cost five pounds not these days on skype doesn't cost anything and uh no email costs five pounds especially not if it's written by a volunteer who's doing it for free and so five pounds a call is just a way of giving to your accountant a way that he can explain away all the hundreds of millions of pounds you're being donated The listening role requires a criminal record check, of course, because you don't want people who are dishonest who might expose you, like me. Well, I'm honest. I'm not dishonest. You don't want somebody who's honest who would expose you, and you don't want dishonest people inside. Well, nobody wants a criminal check, but there'll be other reasons for them wanting to do a criminal check on you because they can't just do a criminal check. They can do a, If they do a criminal check, you give them permission for that, then they do other checks as well. Yeah. And so, they have zero tolerance for anyone who tries to take advantage of the vulnerable people. Well, I have zero tolerance for you because you're taking advantage of vulnerable people who contact you to become a volunteer. Because that volunteer thinks that they're helping somebody and you're going to train them to give them these standard responses with two questions to get them to keep talking, keep talking, just keep them talking. It's not about helping them so that they don't have to call back. It's about keeping them calling back. And that's what I have a problem with Samaritans. Yeah. So you do one shift of about three to four hours a week and a regular shift during the night. Yeah. So you don't get much. You don't volunteer much. So everyone does their bit. Will I need to volunteer at night? Yes. Four to six hours every... So they're getting somebody doing night shifts for you. It's great some people in distress have somebody to call, but this is another listening volunteer. These are just standard statements written by the company, not by volunteers. If you want a review, you have to identify yourself. An anonymous review is no review at all. Unless you can check up the person who gave the review and check up their integrity, that kind of review is no review at all. And using the privacy of the volunteer as an excuse for not being able to check up the integrity of the reviewer is not an excuse. So these are not reviews by volunteers because the volunteer has not um, identified themselves. Yeah. And I can bet you these, this is a paid actress I can't hear. This is a movie star, isn't it? Oh, this is paid. This is paid.
I'm taking a screenshot because I'm going to do some face searches with this. I'm going to do some face searches for who they are and I'll find out who they are. I'm finding out who these people are because they're not Samaritans. They're actors. And that poster in the background is... Bet that's Samaritans. Get a screenshot of that old bag. So that's enough of that. That is supposed to be Samaritans who remain anonymous showing their face on video. Yeah, that's actually actors. And we're going to do an image search, which I'm going to, well, maybe. Uh, do a pim eyes. And let's just check this person, for example. Uh, and this one. Let's do these two people in Pimais, right? I want to blow up that picture to see if that's a Samaritan's poster in the back. Yeah, it's a Samaritan's poster in the back. And so, back to Safari. Let's upload a face photo. Accept, accept. Upload files. Photo library. But I'll do this with all the faces. No, that's not her. That's not her. All traces are quite difficult, actually. We'd have to do a proper check. So we don't get her. Let's try another one. Let's try another one. No, sorry. <laughs> That was me. Uh, upload files. Photo library. Recent. This girl. That guy I want to do. What happened here? Okay. Well, definitely not available for stock photos, but Pimais is not very good. It's not very good. But as you can see, these are stock photos and Instagram photos. We haven't got them. So they might not be actors or models, or they might be who haven't uploaded their images to stock photo. But uh, if they're any well-known kind of actors, then they should come up. No. So let's just try the dude. Let's just try the dude. My son. <laughs> okay. Well, that didn't work. Usually I can find, if I take time, I'll be able to find who everybody is in there. And if they're real Samaritans or not. But there you go. Basically, this ends with, how do you think staying in private income will help you develop resilience? Yeah. Um, let's do,
That's a very diverse experiences, love. How do those experiences, are there any of them you feel you might benefit from talking about in more detail? Yeah? That's how to keep you talking, yeah? With a question. Are you able to talk about how you're feeling at the moment and how you are coping with these feelings day to day? That's another question. That's because five pounds every time I respond. So, this is the first one is very long, yeah? So, here we go. The negative thoughts that have entrapped you. So, I wrote her all this stuff. While thinking, yeah? Be nice if, to talk to somebody. Everybody wants somebody to talk to somebody. Well, let's just spice it up a bit. Because I caught a few fake non profits and I'm very suspicious. So apart from actually just thinking, wanting to know, if, do these people really care or not about people in distress? Um, see if they're any good or not, you know. So being a webmaster and knowing about email marketing and non-profits and how they do this, you notice how every email here, yeah, ends with a question, yeah. There's the question. That's the first email, the very first. So it's tentative. The second one, a question. A question, yeah? Question mark, yeah? The third one. A question to keep you answering. The fourth one. And they're written by different people. It's not the same person because it's volunteers. So I've written five emails with this Joe. The person who is answering me every time is not the same person. How the f duck can they know what was discussed in the first email? Do they have to go back and read them all? Because I write about 80,000 word emails. There's no way they're going to be able to read them all. It will take them four hours to read one of them. Which I deliberately wrote very long as well. To see. So here you have a different person answering you every time called Joe. Everybody's called Joe. And here you have one question mark and here you have another one. So here they've got two question marks to keep me going because they probably felt me slipping. I haven't written for a while. Yeah. So there you go. And what I said with the last one was... I go to my outbox Hang on Joe And who did she write to? Who did, where did I write from? <laughs> I go to my outbox and I'm going to look Joe at Samaritans Thailand Amulets She wrote to me at Thailand Amulets Okay, so I go to my scent of Thailand amulets, inboxes, outlook, no, scent, by scent here, and here's what I wrote. Despite still overcoming PTSD, I decided to cease, I meant to say cease, I was using Siri. Cease communications with you because it costs somebody a donation every time you talk to somebody. I found this paid micro-influencer blog, which shows that Samaritans is actually paying bloggers to bring people to the website. Give them the link, which I just showed you in the screen. Class. I myself uh, am a blogger on my blogger. <laughs> Goddamn Siri, but an ethical one. And I do not accept paid reviews or paid leads or clicks. This is the typical phenomenon you see with non-profit agencies that are scratching around for money. I have ceased to believe in your organization and instead I will talk to myself. As I said, the Buddha became awakened by talking to himself or with himself. Better said, better said, not sad. Thank you, Siri. Talking to you has just revealed to me that you are just trying to keep the conversation going and further investigation of your website, being an exposure of fake non-profits or non-profits that... Being, being an exposer 
Me being an exposer of fake non-profits and or non-profits that really don't reveal what they are really about, seeing as I'm an exposer of such things, of profit, non-profits, yeah, that don't reveal what they're really about or that are scams, so non-profits that are not illegal but not transparent and make people think it's one thing when really it's another thing. Well, this is a money maker for sure. Samaritans is just like all the other non-profits, does not serve any purpose except to propagate its own existence and to make money with it for it with for its owners by laundering it in clever ways. Just like every non-profit business does. I noticed Samaritans has a shop and that it costs five pounds donation for one call. Considering your standard copy and paste answers, which show no understanding at all, but are just intended to keep the conversation going, because every conversation makes five pounds in money. Jesus, that's a lot of money for an email, man. Especially from a volunteer who isn't even being paid. So who's getting the five... The, you pay, you're using all these donations to pay bloggers to get more donations, to pay video actors, to make YouTube video ads for uh, uh, fake Samaritan uh, volunteers professionally filmed in some bedroom as if they were in their own bedroom, which isn't their own bedroom, talking about how good it is to be a Samaritan to get other volunteers. So you're looking for free workers, you're taking five pounds an email or a, or a response, however short or long it is, on a phone that is probably internet phone free, yeah? Well, actually, they're calling you. You're not even paying for the call. You're just answering a call. So it doesn't cost you to answer the call. That costs nothing. The volunteer costs you nothing, yeah? How on earth does it cost five pounds for that phone call? Five pounds? People live for a week here in Thailand on that. Samaritans is not there to help people. It's using donations to pay macro influences, ma pay bloggers, yeah, to tell lies that they called Samaritans and asked for help and how good it is and so on. Just like I showed you the blogger, which we'll go back to shortly, when actually it's a paid blog by a paid blogger who has never called Samaritans, yeah? The blog we were talking about here. The blog we were talking about here. What happened when I called Samaritans? Yeah, this person here, who is a totally professionally written blog, yeah, with thumbnails and everything, yeah? Hattie Gladwell. She did not just write about Samaritans. Hattie Gladwell wrote, pregnant women share the pain of not being able to have their partners at scans. Woman wakes up unable to pee and hasn't urinated for nearly two years since. Model sells naked photos on OnlyFans raise money. 16-year-old, this is like The Sun or The Daily Mirror. Postpart mum sex is the best I've ever had. How to access therapy during the coronavirus pandemic and lockdown. That's probably a paid one by Samaritans or whatever. Well, so I messed it up. Hattie Gladwell. So as we can see here, Hattie Gladwell, who called Hattie Gladwell, this girl, that's not her picture, by the way, it's a guy because as a girl, you sell more, is writing total spam. This is all her articles written by her, yeah? What to do? So she's ha herself has mental problems and calls Samaritans, but she's blogging like this. Hattie Gladwell, professional blogger, happens to have made a blog post about Samaritans that she called them. There's the proof. This is a professional blogger, Hattie Gladwell at metro.kuk. I will be sending this to show that I'm exposing her fake persona, or his fake persona, because it's not a girl, it's a guy. I can tell by the writing. Actually, it might be a girl, because writing about women's stuff, but actually, a lot of guys do this. It's probably a girl. Seeing his face light up and his tears tear up as he saw his son on the screen at my 20-week scan. Hattie Gladwell, you're a liar. 
No, don't that one. Why can I go to the pub? She's writing lies. It's all for women. Well, not all of it. You can stay in your own very self-conserving pub. Oh, my God. Taking a... Look how many pages. 30 pages of blog posts by Hattie Gladwell. And so, there you go. Professionally paid macro-influencer or micro-influencer blog post paid by Samaritans to lie, saying that she has called Samaritans and how good it is. What she has done is blogged about Samaritans for a price and Samaritans have paid with your, oh my God, look how many posts she's written, yeah? So there you go, Samaritans are not for real. They're not for real. We're going to go back to the mail, to my sent items. And we're going to click on this link to show you that Hattie Gladwell called Samaritans on the 11th of April, 2018. She's lived with mental illness for years. So this person who's lived with mental illness for years and has blogged about Samaritans that she called them has also blogged over 30 pages of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, about 20. Wow. She's written at least four to 600 blog posts. She's a professional blogger. There's no way she would be blogging such a well-blogged article with thumbnails if she wasn't receiving money for the blog post from Samaritans. That's really, 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 really bad. Hattie Gladwell or Mr. Gladwell, whoever you are, you said the first night, two nights ago you called Samaritans and you give their contact. That is Samaritans paying, not somebody who's having mental health issues for years. It's somebody paying a macro influencer or a micro influencer, sorry, because I've never heard of her. You have to have heard of them for them to be macro influencers to write a blog for them. So Samaritans.org helps people in the sense that the people who really need someone to talk to get someone to talk to. Unfortunately, those people, although they feel better, are actually supporting five pound rip-offs every time they call up for help. So nothing's just free in this world. And like Captain Sensible from the band The Damned said, life's a con. Yeah? Life is a con. And everything you encounter in life is a con. And so is Samaritans. So exposing the bad side of Samaritans, but also admitting the good side of Samaritans that even though they're a lump of shit and a bunch of professionals paying people to tell lies that they've actually received help from Samaritans when actually they don't need help, haven't had any, and they're receiving money to write that they had. That's a lie. That is actually a crime, even though it's very popular in internet marketing these days. Yeah, To pay a blogger to review your site, your product, with a positive review. Well, a paid review is not a review. It's an advert. Yeah. So Samaritans is paying bloggers to disguise ads as blog posts and lie in the blog post as well. Yeah. That Hattie Gladwell has been suffering mental illness for some years. But Hattie Gladwell is happy happily blogging away. I can tell you when I'm under stress, I'm a blogger, I cannot blog. And in fact, I've slowed down blogging during a period I was under stress, but hardly blogged at all. So this girl is definitely, or boy, is definitely not under stress and is a paid blogger. I don't think I need to keep on. I'm sure you're quite obvious that all these blogs are from Hattie Gladwell, yeah? They're professional blogs with ads in. She makes money or he makes money from it. And this person happily blogging away with 600 at least blog posts on Metro and who knows elsewhere uh, is saying that he or she called Samaritans and that it's really good and she's lived with mental illness for years. 
but the past couple of weeks have been particularly bad. So if we went to April to see how much she'd blogged and what else she'd blogged about, you'll see it's all like this kind of stuff too. I'm not going to put you through it. You could go to metro.org and do a search for Hattie Gladwell. This is, look how well spelled, and this is exactly according to the rules of book publishing and blogging. Perfect spelling, make your paragraphs, and so on. With an ad at the bottom to go here with to Joe. And everybody's called Joe. And most people who call Samaritans stay anonymous and keep anonymous. So why is Hattie Gladwell, who is making money, blogging, risking her career by saying she's having mental health issues? Because who is going to take a blogger seriously, all of her 600 blog posts, if she's having mental health issues? So in one blog post, she says she's been having mental health issues for two years. You're going to think, I'm not going to read anything of this loony. She's sat here writing loony blog posts. But she isn't. I can, you can see that these are viral and uh, top uh, viral clickbait type titles. Model sells naked photos on OnlyFans to raise money for Lyme disease treatment. Woman gets admitted to psychiatric hospital for being unable to pee for nearly two years. That sounds like a total, um, what do you call that, the, the tabloid ads, you know? So there you go. Samaritans paying Hattie Gladwell and me telling Samaritans that they are a load of scammers, yeah? And here's how big it is, yeah? So I'm going to publish it to my YouTube and Facebook channel so everybody knows what you like, and I'm going to, yeah? I say... I do not believe you are listening at all. In fact, I know you're not listening. From the nature of your responses, it's not difficult to say, to see, that your responses are just in, get intended to engage further responses. I'm sorry for the person who donated for you to re read this email. I will be publishing this to my YouTube and Facebook channel. Z channels. Channel is for Siri. Because I find it pretty alarming that Samaritans is yet just another thing that exists for its own benefit, not for the benefit of people in distress. Yeah, I told her about the link. Considering your standard copy and paste answers, which show no understanding at all, but are just intended to keep the conversation going. And that's how you've been trained to give me responses in your training phase, yeah? Hattie Gladwell. <laughs> Because Joe, or whatever your name is, because every conversation makes money. Five pounds. Volunteers work for free, but a phone call costs five pounds. A phone call does not cost five pounds. If I volunteer to answer a call, it costs nothing except how much electricity the light bulb in the room. Samaritans is not there to help people. It's using donations to pay macro influencers and bloggers to write and tell lies that they call, that tell lies that they called Samaritans and asked for help and how good it is and so on and blah, blah. When actually it's just a paid blog by a paid blogger who has never called Samaritans. Using lies and deception in order to attract people so you can ask for five pounds of call donations on, is un, unethical, unethical, thanks Siri, and I shall be publishing my screen costs my screencasts and narratives about this and how disgusting I find it. You might help people on the phone who are feeling down, who are foolish enough to see that you're not really there to listen, but you're actually there to make money. But at least it helps the people who are gullible enough to believe you are listening. And I really mean that. It does help people who get somebody they can talk to. Unfortunately, behind it, there's something very dark. I do not believe you're listening at all. Yeah, so you read the rest. That it's just to keep the conversation going at five pounds a go. And what did I title this? UK expert in Thailand need in badly panic. <laughs> Do I sound like I'm panicking? No, I was investigating. I was a bit depressed, so thought I can use that and talk some real stuff. You need something real. And I can investigate. So that looks quite panicky, badly spelled, you see. Tyler, I need help, no ghost. Panic. <laughs> I need help, I can't care. 
So there you go. Metro.co.uk. Samaritans Paid Blog by Hattie Gladwell. Hattie Gladwell called the Samaritans two nights ago. But Hattie Gladwell is blogging happily away. 600 blogs a month. So that's uh, going to go up on Anonymous Asia, I think. No, I'm going to put it up on my own channel. Fuck it. Screw it. Put this up on my own channel. Exposing Samaritans, but saying there's a need for people needing to call somebody, and if it helps those people, good for them. But people need to also know that the only reason there's somebody there to listen to them is because somebody gets five pounds every time somebody in distress calls Samaritans. Five pounds is knocked off the donation list and put in their golden coffers so that they can pay people like this to tell lies that they called Samaritans and it's very good indeed, you know. Just click here so somebody else can clock up five pounds to make sure it stays a non-profit instead of a profit and the organisation can launder billions because they've got hundreds of um, branches in England and millions of branches around the world. So there you go. Uh, John Spencer. Seeing the need for someone to call for people in distress, but exposing the dark figure that lies under the angel in white on a white horse known as Samaritans.org. There's the scam within the help. John Spencer, signing off.